EPA, along with its state, local, and tribal air quality agency partners, manage a large network of air quality monitors across the nation to measure pollution. The goal is to identify and fix air quality problems to help ensure that all Americans have clean air to breathe. One group of monitors measures particulate matter, or PM. PM is the term used for a mixture of solid particles and liquid droplets found in the air. Some particles, such as dust, dirt, soot, or smoke, are, are large or dark enough to be seen with the naked eye. Others are so small that they can only be detected using a specialized microscope. Particles come in many sizes and shapes and can be made up of many different chemicals. Some particles are emitted directly from a source, such as construction sites, unpaved roads, fields, smokestacks, or fires. Most particles form in the air as a result of complex reactions of emitted pollutants from many different types of sources, such as power plants, industries, and automobiles. As you can see, PM is a complicated pollutant, and our understanding is limited in that most PM monitors around the country only measure how much PM is present in the air, not what the PM is actually made of. To help scientists better understand PM, an additional group of specialized air monitors, shown here, are in place around the country to help us understand not only how much PM is present, but what chemicals are in the PM. This group of specialized monitors is called the Chemical Speciation Network because these monitors help us understand the various types or species of materials that make up the PM in any given location. One of these chemical speciation monitors is located at a monitoring station in the Wylam neighborhood south of downtown Birmingham, Alabama. This particular chemical speciation monitor measures the different types of metals that may be in the PM in the local air. When reviewing the results of the samples collected around the country from PM chemical speciation monitors, EPA scientists noticed that the amount of one of several metals measured, chromium, was often higher in the samples collected at the Wylam monitor than at other air monitors across the country. In the picture here, each of the group of dots from left to right represents one of the speciation monitors across the country, as well as the amount of chromium that was measured at each monitor over a 15-year period. As you can see, most of the concentrations measured at the different monitors are low. However, at the, mon at the Wylam monitor, chromium concentrations were sometimes found to be higher. So what does that mean in terms of air quality in the Wylam area? The answer is a little complicated. As it turns out, there are different types of chromium but only one type is currently known to be toxic when you breathe it in. This type of chromium is called hexavalent chromium. When people are exposed to hexavalent chromium in the air at high enough levels for a long period of time, the chance of experiencing a negative health effect, such as lung cancer, may increase. The obvious next question is whether the chromium we measured at the Wylam monitor was the hexavalent chromium type. More information was needed to answer that question. To determine what type of chromium was in the air, EPA, in conjunction with JCDH, did a special study from April 2018 to April 2019. In that study, 
special samplers were placed at the Wylam monitoring site to specifically measure for hexavalent chromium and other metals. Samples were collected over the course of one year and sent to a laboratory to be evaluated for hexavalent chromium and other metals. What we found is that hexavalent chromium was present in most of the samples. We also found that of all the chromium present in the samples, only about 9% on average was the hexavalent chromium type. Most of the chromium measured in the air was not the hexavalent type. So what does all this mean for the health of people who live in the area? The Clean Air Act is the nation's law that we follow to protect human health and the environment from air pollution. While the law allows some amount of pollution in the air, it seeks to minimize that pollution to keep people and the environment safe. For some chemicals, like those found in smog, the law sets specific limits for the pollutants. For other chemicals, like hexavalent chromium, the Clean Air Act does not set a specific allowable level in air. Instead, the law provides a yardstick for us to use to judge whether the concentrations of toxic chemicals we find in air samples are high enough to cause a potential health concern. For example, when a chemical that can cause cancer is in the air that we breathe, like the hexavalent chromium found in Wylam, we use the results of the air quality samples we collected to estimate the likelihood that someone may develop cancer over their lifetime. In preparing this estimate, we assume that people are continuously exposed to the chemical in outdoor air all day, every day, for their entire lives, and we assume that to be 70 or more years. Once we have our estimate of cancer risk, we compare it to our yardstick, and if we find that the estimated risk is higher than a chance of 100 in 1 million, that prompts us to look closer to determine if there really is a problem that needs to be addressed. 100 in 1 million means that in a population of 1 million people who are exposed to a chemical at a constant and continuous level over their entire lifetime might result in up to 100 of those people developing cancer because of that lifetime exposure. Using the Wylam air monitoring data, we estimated that the cancer risk is at the 100 in 1 million level. Most of that risk was due to the hexavalent chromium measured in the air. We did not find the potential for other non-cancer health problems due to the measured levels of metals, including chromium in the air. The good news is that the estimated cancer risk that we calculated using the Wylam monitoring data is not higher than 100 in 1 million. However, because the chromium levels in the air in Wylam are somewhat elevated, it is something that we want to keep an eye on. We'll talk about that next. To help ensure that air quality in the Wylam neighborhood remains safe, JCDH is in the process of reinstalling the special equipment at the Wylam monitoring site to collect additional samples for hexavalent chromium and other metals. The plan is to start with collecting six months of samples to see if hexavalent chromium and other metal levels are the same or decreasing. 
depending on the circumstances, additional samples may be taken. If concentrations have increased, an attempt will be made to determine the primary contributors to the measured values and then to look for options to reduce emissions and improve air quality.